A High Pitch Cry for Help by Problematic Underslash Lana on AO3. Chapter 16 To the Principal's Office On a Saturday, the family of three went to UA. Nessie was rather clear on how he wanted the meeting to be. At UA, on a no-school day, and most importantly, both adults and Izuku had to come. Aizawa politely tried convincing him that there was no point in bringing Izuku, but the mouse-slash-bear-slash-dog principal would not give in to his demands. He also asked for a bit of milk, as he had run out of it the day prior, and wished to have some tea for them all. Aizawa cursed as a sailor, but ended up just making a quick stop for the damn milk anyways, muttering, What am I, the fucking milkman? Mike was not pleased when Izuku asked what fucking meant. They all went by car, and the kids seemed to be under the impression that he had to dress his best, for he was wearing black pants and a t-shirt that the couple found hilarious. It just had the word fancy suit on it. Izuku didn't have a proper suit, but, well, there were not many occasions where a six-year-old would need one anyways. They got there, as early as it would be to wake up for a young kid. It was 9 a.m., and Mike had the suspicion that Aizawa had barely had an hour or two of sleep. He couldn't even imagine how it would be like when they went back to patrol the streets next Monday. They would probably have to make a schedule on how to take care of Izuku as they both worked at weird hours. Well, that is why they needed the recommendation letter anyways. The huge door automatically opened when they got too close with the car, and they were all a bit nervous. Izuku sees a difficult institution and its principal, and the couple at the thought of Nezu meeting their kid. The non-human was insane, and there was no denying it. They just hoped it was curiosity for the adoptee, and not a plan for some weird experimentation. They took longer than expected to get to the office, giving Izuku the time needed to take the view in and ask his questions. He was told that the principal was not human, but that he had human-like intelligence, so he wasn't really sure what to expect from the situation. He just hoped to one day be in the same halls as a student, and not a visitor. He knew he was smart enough for the support course, but with the discovery of his quirk, he hoped to be a great hero student. The office was obviously built for the comfort of the short, animal-like principal, so no one said anything when the door handle was just at the perfect height for the youngest visitor to open. Inside, Nezu was waiting very casually next to the teapot, too casually. Oh, just in time, please come in. He adjusted his tie and started pouring in three cups. I take it you're the famous Izuku. A nonchalant smile towards the boy, and he sat behind his desk. It is so refreshing seeing someone so young in this institution. Next to two pro heroes trained here, too. Wonderful, please make yourself comfortable. They all sat in the place Nezu had indirectly assigned them by putting their cups to. Izuku took a bit longer to understand what he was seeing, but then decided that it was rude to stare at the creature for too long and sat himself, too. Some hot chocolate in front of him. Shoda put the milk in the middle of the desk, clearly annoyed. Glad to see you're doing well, Nezu. Long time no see. Mike interrupted the odd silence. This cutie here is Izuku, yes. He doesn't talk, so please f- No worries, I am well aware. The smile, as he took a sip, didn't do anything to amend the extraining feeling his knowledge left on both heroes. I'm sure you all here because you need help re-enrolling him in school, am I correct? Basically, yes. Shoda intervened sincerely, and we would also like to know what you had in mind when inviting us here. Oh, please, Aizawa, no need to get so serious. I'm just curious about what you both have been up to after all these years. He took another sip before continuing. And, of course, take this opportunity to extend an invitation as hero teachers for both of you. We didn't accept last year. Why would we now? Shota immediately added. He knew the job would actually be very beneficial for them, and Mike especially had been very interested. Well, to be completely honest, you have a kid now. He started, 
searching for something in the drawer. And by educating some teens, you could learn a thing or two about how to raise one, not even mentioning how a regular day job could benefit a family environment. He took a whole folder and sat it in front of a very confused Izuku. And why did you want us to bring Izuku for? Mike meddled in, trying to avoid the argument that every year they had via email. They could talk about the repetitive job position later. There was no need to expose the problem child to adult matters. And what is that exactly? Well, for what I know, little Izuku has a very interesting quirk. Aizawa's eyes flashed red for a second, staring intently at Nezu in a type of warning. Over his dead body, he would let the mouse experiment on his kid. If that was the case, the meeting was about to be cut short. Let's not get too agitated now, please. I hold a special place in my brain for small humans who have yet to develop. This folder holds all the information I have about students of all courses and years who have had some type of sound quirk. I just thought it would be useful as a reference. Aizawa let slide the in my brain statement and went to grab the folder before Izuku. I rarely see this type of... He mediated his words carefully so as to not create any extra doubts in the kid's mind. Exposure-based quirk. So with your permission, of course, I would like to give him my very own quirk counseling. This time it was Mike to be the one to feel the need to hide his little listener. Izuku was already too overwhelmed with all the quirk stuff to really understand what quirk counseling with Nezu could entail. Mike put an arm in between the rat and his son. Unconsciously, already refusing the offer, even if it meant to let go of the teacher offer too. We are glad he's a good quirk to pique your interest, Nezu, he said politely, but at the moment he doesn't need any type of extra exposure that could end up on a decline in his mental state. And maybe it was as rude as the blonde was willing to say, but he still held Nezu at a high standard and felt he owed him some respect. He is still a kid, and we fully intend to provide him with a healthy childhood. That is our priority now. No one said anything for a second, turning his attention to Izuku, who was so casually playing with the cup of cocoa. He had a finger in the border of the plastic cup, and he was really focused on how the contexts of it were shaking in horizontal waves, not even realizing others in the rooms were watching him use his quirk without noticing. As I would try deactivating his quirk and returning it in less than a second, Providing in a way that the kid didn't know how to reactivate it. He just took a sip then. The cocoa was hot now. Well, mind me, Neza giggled. It looks like you need it, even if you don't want it. As I was sighed, exhaustion at the mere idea. If it puts your minds at ease, I'm not against supervision. And while well, you would be able to do it so easily if you worked here. Touché. Now, I'll give you time to think about it. While we go to the next subject, you wanted to talk about Aldera Junior High and its preschool, right? The bear then lost his juvenile smile, turning serious in a second. How about I take Izuku to see the support course inventions while you guys talk about this topic? I don't want to accept, I don't want to upset the little listener. And while Mike was being a bit selfish and not wanting to know the full details of what his little greenie had to go through just yet, he would do good in knowing when he didn't have to hide his reactions from the horror to Izuku. Shoto was the one that had access to the police report so far, so he knew best anyways. When no complaints appeared, he held a hand out to a confused Izuku, who, funnily enough, went to say goodbye to Nezu by petting him. The principal just smiled awkwardly and waved. He would later explain to Izuku that you shouldn't pet people, or... Whatever Nezu was. When the door closed and they were safe from peering ears, Shoda said his opening statement. Burn that school down and I'll teach here. He would have to settle on something else. Apparently Mike was against arson. Too much pollution, you know? All right, okay, so this was interesting. All right, so I don't know if this is a good Nezu story or a bad Nezu. I hope it's a good Nezu story because I do know that sometimes Nezu is a bad character and sometimes Nezu is a good character. 
and ignore that door. And uh, it just depends on, uh, you know, which story and which author. What the fuck are you doing? Making so damn much noise. Don't act like you're the cat. You ain't the cat. Jesus Christ. Man started meowing as if I think the cat would open the door. Oh my god. Anyways, but as I was saying, um, so I, I'm, I'm a little worried of Nezu right now because we don't know if he's good or not. But hopefully he's not bad. I really hope that he's not. I, I desperately hope that he's not. Um, yes, you can have that. Give me one. Jesus Christ. I was trying to say that without saying it out loud because I'm recording right now. Yeah, that's what I understood. That's what I understood. They can't even pick you up when you say the Stitch voice. What? They can't? Okay, now they can. What do you mean they can't? You need to project your voice. <clears throat> when you're doing the Stitch voice, you also have to project. So like this? Or is that just being louder? No, that's projecting. Oh, okay. I gotta use my presentation voice. Yes, that is what it is. Exactly. I, I don't like doing the presentation voice. For me, projecting literally just means stop regulating my voice. Uh, and it will just gradually go louder. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, my big notes is I am a little worried of Nezu and I really want Aldera to go down. So for now, that's all my notes. I think I don't have anything else. Um, it's really interesting how Izuku was using his fork without realizing it. And I'm worried of Nezu. That, that's pretty much it. As always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and social medias are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.